Hey guys, welcome back to part number five, I think it is, of my MiG-29 SMT um, build, the Trump to 132nd kit. So, where I'm at, I'm pretty much ready for paint. Um, unfortunately, the place I got the paint from has um, said it was in stock, but it seems like maybe it wasn't in stock, so I've, I've been on a bit of a hold for a little bit. So, hopefully I get the paint, paint soon, I can carry on with the build. Um, so, I did, I think I mentioned in the previous video, I went, ended up going with the... Um, MRP paints for the SMT colors. I looked at various colors online, uh, mixes and stuff, and I couldn't really get anything similar. Um, it's very really distinctive colors. Uh, also, the color callouts and instructions are crap. It's basically mer mer US Navy, like like ghost gray and stuff, which is nowhere near what it should be. So, all of the MRP paints, um, all in Hobby World USA. Um, I should have gone Sprue Rubbers, but it's a little bit cheaper, Hobby World, so I kind of got burnt a little bit there. It did say it was in stock, but like I said, it's been over a week and it sells and shipped, so... I was having to pass with them, so I think what happens is, I think they put people's orders in and get them from the manufacturer. It takes like two or three weeks, so hopefully soon they'll get going, um, and moving soon, so I get on with the build. So, this part is going to be all wet, pretty much paint, so I this primed, um, ready to go, um, did the pylons, one thing, a neat thing I did with the pylons and the ordnance, I actually magnetized it. So I'll show you kind of how I put magnets in and, and magnetized it. Um, what else? I painted the engine up. It looks pretty cool. I'll show you guys the engine. And um, yeah, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, Paintable, and also I'll primarily have a little bits and bobs like you see behind me. The um, like various like banding gear I've done, um, exhaust nozzles, speed brakes, all that kind of stuff. So I'm all ready to go. So. Um, for paint that is. So let me switch the camera down and kind of show you and talk you through where I'm up to um, on the build. Okay, so this is where I'm up to. You see the primers on. The usual, if you see, follow my channel, you know, I can't do it every same way every time. I love using this Mr. Service of Black, which is a lacquer based product. So this is basically what we use as a primer, it gets rid of all the fine scratches and stuff. And then. You can use any white you want. Um, I just have this one open, so I use this Game Air Dead White. Um, and again, it's just any white would work. Um, so I just use white then to basically just splodge it on in the center of all the panels and um, break it up. So what it does basically, as you can see, it creates a shadow coat. So when paint I'm using is MRP paint, which is pretty thin. So when a paint goes on over the top, this is going to show, hopefully, show through underneath, and you normally get some kind of like. Um, Get some breakup of the paint and some weathering effects, um, post like pre shading. Um, the other way of doing it is the opposite where people prime in gray or white and they just individually put lines on with a black paint. Um, you can do that too. I just find this is easier. Um, this is what I do for armor and it works great for aircraft too. So, this is how I've done all my recent builds, um, for the past six months or so, prime it this way. Um, so yeah, so, so it's just real easy to so kind of paint the whole thing black and then just white, just random, just set on panels and stuff. Um, it's kind of hard to see right now, but once the paint goes on, the wash goes on, you'll see kind of how it all breaks up. The only thing with this is too, there's going to be three camo colors. So by the time I get to the third camo color, the dark, the dark gray green color, um, some of this you're probably not going to see, um, just because it's three layers of paints. Um, so it is what it is, but I come in with neat oils afterwards and you'll see later on when I do weathering, um, how I weather it using the oils. But this creates a good base effect. Um, yeah, so you see it's looking really cool. It's the other side of it. Master, master canopy, I mask it up using, um, well, I always use mask sets normally, but if it's something simple like this with no like bigger scale and, and no tiny little windows and stuff, I like using the Tamir white, this is three millimeter, the white curved masking tape works really good. Go around the bends and stuff. And then I just fill it in with the typical, either the um, six or 10 mil Tamiya tape, just fill in the gap. Um, yeah, so that's the main guy um, primed, both sides. You can see what I did, I put one of the engines in and I put the cup, glue the cover on. This one, you can see it's a different color. I painted it separately and this just clicks into place and stays in. And I'll show you in a minute, I paint the engine. So basically the engine is gonna be exposed but you can put a cover on if you want. Um, this one engine. So I did a lot of looking online and researching. I had no idea. I couldn't find any color for the, the, the bay. I don't know if it's metallic or what it is. So oh boy, wait, I found I had this on the shelf. MRP Lemon Gray Russian Aviation Primer for bottom entry aircraft. So I thought, well, that's close enough. So I just went with like a duck over my black um, shadow coat. I think, no, 
hose it on. I just went like so it could create some kind of weathering. I kind of like just dusted it on this color. Um, just this area and inside of you can see quite I use quite a lot of paint. Um, the problem with MRP is these lighter colors like greens especially. Um, if you do use a lot of paint, get coverage. So you can see I use probably maybe about a quarter of a bottle. Um, just get this little bit done. And under this, my plan with this paint was I were I was going to um, I was going to um, do like an SU twenty seven or an SU thirty five in Russian primer colored. All of this with basically different shades of the primer. But having seen coverage with this, I'm not sure that's going to work because if I got through cold cold bottle and just these couple of parts, um, it take me tons of paint to cover a whole aircraft. But anyway, so that's that done. Um, painted the wheelbase. Still 100% sure of the color, but it should be like light gray. I went with a, um, I think it's X53 possibly. It's a little bit darker, so I came back with X, XF, sorry, XF53. It's a little bit too dark, so I came back with XF19 and kind of added some more and thinned down to kind of lighten up a little bit. Um, probably needs a little bit more lightening too. So um, that's no problem, the engine bay, because obviously this is going to go on top when I paint it. Actually, it's dry, so actually, I'm going to film right now. So that'll stay like that while I paint the camo and paint on the external colors. Um, this all mask up. This is my typical way of doing it. Um, I do the, I like to paint the wheel wells first, and then mask it, and then paint paint the rest, and then just remove the masking, and then you, you're good to go. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much painting on the main aircraft or priming, should I say? Say, so looking really good. This is why I have it. Let me talk to you about my magnets. So, I don't know if you can see them because I've kind of painted over them, but each of the each of the um, three pylons, I put in two magnets on the um, inside the aircraft, and I put two on the pylons. Um, again, you can't really see it on here. Um, I did make a slight boo boo that I did one wing and I did the other wing, and it's um, I got polarity opposite on the other wing for some reason. I, I, but not big deal, it just means you can't switch the pylons between wings. Um, so what I used were these guys, which are very small earth magnets, really cheap from eBay, I think like $4 maybe for like 50 or 25 or something. Um, these are actually two 2 by one millimeter, so it means they're one millimeter wide and two millimeter deep, or height-wise. Again, I'm not sure how, so you can really see these on the camera, it's the tiny. Um, I have various sizes for different things, pretty handy. See some bigger ones, some smaller ones. Um, so what I basically did is drill, so one millimeter, drill one millimeter holes, where well, I marked where the holes were, drill one millimeter, drop the magnet in, a um, little super glue, hold it in, and then did the same on the pylons. So drill holes in the pylons, again, you're not really going to see it, I kind of paint, you might see it slightly, I kind of primed over it. Um, you're not going to see these anyway, because it's a touch, and then, if I get the right side, that's the wrong side. And there you go, they just stick on the magnet. Oh, wait. And if they should hold, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've got it right on line. Where is it? It's up there. Wait, I've got the wrong side, I think. There you go, I had the wrong side. So, there you go, see it just sticks. And then you can pull, pull, pull these off, I'll put them on. Um, I did all six of them. Yeah, I've got polarity mixed up on both wings, so they only go on one wing. So that goes on that wing. It's kind of, now I painted it, it's kind of hard to see where to go. See, they just stick. Oop. Goes like that. And yeah, they should hold the ordnance no problem, well, fingers crossed. Um, when you see these ordnance in a minute, they're pretty big, some some one you're going with. So, um, yeah, so that's the pylons. Okay, it's kind of hard to show the camera, but you can kind of see how they just stick on. And magnets, they come right off. Makes it easier for painting, and then um, also if you want to change the ordnance around at the future date, you can do that. Um, I'm not going to do that, it's just, it's just something I've spent a couple hours of work to do that. So I want to show you guys that. So that's the pylons. What's um, next? The engine. Here's the engine. I, um, in the end, did wire it. I kind of followed, I've looked at some pictures online and kind of followed the molded lines and used a selection of different wires. 
Um, let's put some right here. So I use this stuff um, plus model lev wire. And I think I use a mixture of 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0.6 millimeter for various different sizes. So I use those three sizes. So I wired it. Um, I did spend a lot of time wiring the top here, but then when I realized when it goes on the aircraft, you're not going to see any of the top. So it's kind of a waste of time somewhat. So I wired it different wires, you can see, um, to give it a little bit extra detail. And um, paint it. So I painted mostly um, two colors of AK Extreme Metals. I think I used steel for the main and then um, dark aluminum for the shades. And the front here, I think it's actually. Um, this is aluminum by Model Air to make it a little brighter. So I painted it, main colors, um, then went over hand painted the wires, various colors. Uses a, I put I put a, a picture up showing different colors I used. I hand painted the wires using AK Model Air. I love that for like painting metallics. Um, and then what well, then I used Tamiya black tanaliner wash for, for weathering, and then. Um, I used various outclads for again creating kind of like tonal effects, so like hot metal, um, sepia, and like little exhaust, um, jet exhaust color, just to give some different colors and, and staining and stuff. So I got really happy how that turned out. So that's the engine. Then I built and painted the tow bar. It comes with a kit. Well, I painted orange. Um, I, I still got to paint the tires and the you know detail parts. Just paint the main base color, but that builds up. Um, it's quite big. I'm not sure if I can display it or not, but it's nice. It comes with the kit. Fuel tanks primed. Center fuel tank. In typical Russian form. It's very kind of funky looking. Again, using my same priming method: black and then hitting white to give it some shadow effect for base color. Then gear. This is the main gear. This is a metal part and has plastic around the edge. It's just been primed. Uh, I'm pretty much primed everything really. I'm ready to go for paint. And then last but not least, the ordnance. So these are primed. I painted the tails red and then first I'll mask that off and paint the rest white. Um, these are the R73s, the air-to-air -air missiles. Then I did the KH KH-29Ts, which are air-to-ground missiles, laser-guided. Um, this loadout is a typical kind of like recent like Syrian loadout. I did some research online. So they're carrying basically two two R seventy threes and two KH twenty nine Ts. So the KH twenty nine Ts, you know, just primed and ready for paint. Um, they're huge, <laughs> big, giant ordnance. Um, so it's primed, and then it has a um, clear part that goes on the end um, here. But yeah, really cool. Um, they have a giant, like measure it centimeters here. They're about eleven centimeters long. Um, I guess the joys of being a 30 second scale modeling. So that, yeah, those guys are painted. Um, you do get a ton of ordnance. You can kind of see down here, kind of the menu of items. And just pages. Like the actual aircraft stops at like part 30, but then there's 55 parts. So then you basically want 25 more parts for, just for ordnance. And if I just pull these to the side and kind of show you, That lock is all extra weapons I'm not going to use. Um, great for the spares piles. So you, you get a ton of stuff here. I mean, ton of plastic. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with this. Love this kit. Um, a lot of these aren't even... Um, like I'm not sure exactly what that one is, that head, but that's not even in instructions. So that's probably for a different version of um, MiG-29 they make. But there's just weapons after weapons after weapons. I think I counted 12 sprues. Um, so all that lot is not going to be used on this kit. Again, just going to be... Um, used for another build um, or kept in the spares, spares pile. So yeah, really loving this kit. Again, it's 
That's the guy, it's the MIG, Russian MiG-29 SMT Fulcrum. It's item number 03225. Um, so far it's a dream. I just really at the painting stage, so kind of coming towards the end somewhat. And actually my favorite part, painting and weathering. Um, hope you enjoyed the build series. Um, hope you find this helpful. I do appreciate everybody commenting, all the great feedback. I do appreciate all the new subscribers. I had tons of new people subscribing recently, and I just really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Um, so yeah, until next time. Stay, stay safe, and um, I'll put my next one up in about, well, as soon as I get my paint. So I'll say I'm on hold for paint right now, so hopefully a week or two, and then once I got my paint on, I'll come back and do a video update of where I'm at with the paint stage. So thanks again. Have a good one. See ya.